If we take a look at the VR spectrum, at one end we have VR headsets like the Valve Index or Quest 3, which bring full immersion, but they're heavy, and if you were to wear it in public, you would look silly. Then, at the complete opposite end, we have smart glasses, like the Meta Ray-Bans, which are wearable in public, but are limited in what they can do and provide no immersion. So if we have VR over here and smart glasses over here, logically, the next step would be to make a product that meets kind of in the middle of these two, that has the tech of this fitting in the form factor of this. A device that gives you some of the immersion of VR without making you stick out like a sore thumb. But are there any devices that sit in this middle spot already? Well, it turns out there are several companies working on just that product. One of which, Xreal, actually reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to review some of their products, the Air 2 Pros and the Beam Pro. I've been using these products for about two months now and I have some thoughts on them. So consider this my review of the Xreal Air 2 Pros and Beam Pro. For this video, we're gonna split up the review into three main parts. First, I'll talk about the glasses, the Air 2 Pros, and then I'll talk about the Beam Pro and how it combines with the glasses. In both cases, I'll talk about the positives and the negatives. Then finally, I'll talk about my experience with these devices and how I personally use them and I'll give my conclusions. And for complete transparency, this isn't a paid sponsored video, but Xreal did send me both these products for review. But as always, I will be completely honest and you'll see that in this video. So let's start with the glasses first, the Air 2 Pros. And to be completely honest, on their own, they're a pretty straightforward device. The first and obvious thing you'll notice about these glasses is that they look way closer to the smart glasses than they do the VR headset. It actually weighs in at about 75 grams. So I've worn these for hours and had no problems with it being on my head for that long. The way the glasses work is at the end of the left arm of the glasses, there is a USB-C port. So you take the provided USB-C cable, stick the curved end into the glasses and the other end into your device of choice, which in my case is a Steam Deck. Then just wait a second and you should see the displays light up in the glasses and you're good to go. So it's really easy to set up. And the Air 2 Pro will work with any device that has a USB-C video output. That includes the Steam Deck, ROG Ally, Windows PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone 15, and select Android devices, and a few more. The screens in these glasses are 1920 by 1080p per eye, 120 hertz micro OLED panels with 46 degrees field of view, and this gives you a 130 inch screen that floats there in your vision. Though in my experience using this device, where you're looking actually can affect whether the screen feels bigger or smaller than 130 degrees. Let me explain. Hello everybody, there's me in the reflection on the TV. Imagine now that this video is the view that you have when you have the Air 2 Pros on and you're playing your Steam Deck. So imagine if I had a chair right here and I sat facing this wall playing my Steam Deck against this, looking at this wall. To me, because of, I'm so close to this wall, the screen kind of looks about 15 inches big because the wall is there. So I can change that by coming over and sitting on this cat, no, on the chair, right? If I sit on this sofa, bam. Now that 15 inch screen feels way bigger and is probably more like the 130 inches that they say it does. Now, if you can imagine again, possibly going out into a night sky, looking up into the sky, it would seem like there is a massive projection in the night sky, way bigger than 130 inches. So that's what I mean by your perspective in the real world can change how big the screen feels when you have the glasses on. One of the cooler features of these glasses is that you can actually change the tint of the lenses with the press of a button. There are free settings that you can toggle between and I have no idea if this is gonna show up on camera. I might have to do some B-roll, but if I click this, it changes it to a darker setting and then I can press it again and it goes to even darker. And this is gonna be useful if you're in a place that has a lot of light. And even on the strongest setting, it doesn't completely block out 100% of the light. I can still see my light there through the glasses on the strongest setting, but they do give you this plastic cover, which does completely block out the light if you need it. Last year, I went on holiday and I took my Steam Deck with me and I remember sitting by the pool, wanting to relax and play some games, but I couldn't because the sun was so bright that it completely like blinded the screen. And if I had had these glasses at the time, I would have been easily able to play. One of the major positives I found with using this device is that when I use my Steam Deck on my phone, I tend to hold it low or in my lap. And if I'm lying in bed or like sitting on the sofa, I have to angle my neck down to look at the screen and that can cause neck pain. And I can say that as a fact because that literally happened to me one time I was using my Steam Deck. So let's quickly move past that clear evidence that I'm getting old and let's talk about how the Air 2 Pro fixes that issue. When you put these glasses on, the screens are obviously wherever you're looking, which means you can use your Steam Deck, sit back, 
keep your head in a straight position and not strain it looking down and you can play your game, meaning you don't have any neck pain. In terms of the audio on the Air 2 Pro, it actually has two speakers in both of its arms. Now I'm not really an audiophile, but when I used these, I thought the audio sounded good and when I had them on max volume, it was perfect for movies. One thing to note obviously is that these are speakers on this and therefore whatever you're watching isn't going to be fully private if you have these on max volume. And there is some sound bleed off when you use these things. So for me personally, I don't really like that. So I just paired them with my Bluetooth headphones and it solved the problem completely and it to be honest sounds better than using the speakers. One thing that I want to mention is that these glasses come with these kind of nose pad things which you can slot into the glasses and they're different shapes and sizes. So when I put the glasses on with all three of these it kind of sat too high on my nose and I couldn't see the screen properly and what I ended up having to do was like kind of force these apart which they are made of metal so I think you can do that and I think they are designed to be malleable like that but it's just something I wanted to let you know in case you do decide to get these devices. And now whenever I put these on they instantly sit right on my head. There's no fidgeting around with them. They just work perfectly. And um, yeah, so just something to be aware of. You can just pull them apart a little bit. Now let's move on to the second part of this review, which is about the Beam Pro. And you might be watching this video right now thinking, Ryan, that's just a phone, but it's actually not. You couldn't make a phone call with this if you wanted to. And the way you need to think of the Beam Pro is as a companion computer to the glasses, which gives it more features. When you plug your glasses into the Beam Pro, you'll be greeted with a UI that's very similar to Apple Vision Pros with floating app icons. You then use the Beam Pro itself as a controller with a pointer. Imagine the Wii controller. And then to click and scroll through apps, you use the touchscreen on the front. It's very intuitive and easy to use. But that's not all. When you pair these two things together, the Beam Pro actually gives the glasses three and six degrees of freedom. When you press this red button on the side of the Beam Pro, you can actually toggle between different viewing modes. The first one being anchor, which kind of sticks your view at a set point in space, and then you can look away from it with the glasses. And while this is a very cool feature, and there are some use cases for this, for example, if you had two windows side by side, you could look between the two. For me personally, because of the 46 degree field of view on these things, if you look away from the window, you see it get cut off because you're going away from the edge of the screen. And I don't personally like that very much. So for example, if you're watching a Netflix movie and you put it to large, so it's maxing out the 130 inch TV screen that they advertise and you fix it in place, you have to keep your head incredibly still because if you move, you're instantly going to be going out of that field of view and you're gonna be cutting off the movie. So you have to keep your head I'm really, really, really still. If you move in like that much, it cuts it off. Then the other mode that you have with this thing is the follow mode, which is my personal favorite. So what that means is if you have these glasses on and you're watching a movie and you move your head to the left, it follows you, but slightly lagging behind. And what this means is say, if you're in a car and it's very bumpy, it actually stabilizes the video, which is a big plus because that means that you won't get as motion sick. And to me, that was the best setting and I used it the most often. The Beam Pro actually runs off of Android 14, which means you have the access to the Google Play Store. So you have loads and loads of apps that you can download. So for example, one thing that I did download is the Xbox Cloud Gaming app. So in theory, I could take this, I could take this, and I could take an Xbox controller. And as long as I had fun enough internet, I could play Xbox games wherever I was, which is really cool. But I do have to say that not every game or app will work from the Play Store on this device. For example, there are mobile games that uses touch controls, and that doesn't really translate well to the controls on the Beam Pro when you have the glasses on. But personally, I found the best use for the Beam Pro was for entertainment and watching TV and movies. You can download Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, and basically you will have access to a big screen wherever you are in the world as long as you have these two devices, which is really cool. In terms of the battery life of the Beam Pro, it should last about three to four hours when you're watching videos. So that means you can get through about two movies on this thing on one charge. But if we look at the bottom of the Beam Pro, you'll see that there are two USB-C ports. One is for the glasses themselves, and the second one is for charging. And so that means if you have a charger with you, or if you're on a plane and you have a power bank, you can plug this in, charge it while you're using the glasses and effectively extend the battery life of your Beam Pro and watch more movies than four hours long, which is a great touch. Then let's move on to the camera system, which you may have noticed has two cameras very far apart. And the reason these cameras are so far apart is because it shoots spatial video. So if you record a video or a photo using this device and play it back in the glasses, you can actually see what you recorded in 3D. And personally, I love this. I actually managed to get some videos with this with my dog before she sadly passed away like last month and I'm really thankful for that because now I can go back and kind of look at these little snippets of memories that I have with her and I wouldn't have been able to do this without this device so I'm 
a big fan of it. And because the cameras are so far apart, you actually do get quite good 3D videos and it does feel like there's a lot of depth to the images when you rewatch them. Now, while I do really like the Beam Pro, there are some things that I think need to be worked on and that is mainly in the software department. And while overall my experience with this device and the software was good, there were occasions, for example, where I would try and open an app or press on a video on Netflix or pause a movie while I was in the middle of it because I had to go do something and it wouldn't register the button presses. And then at other times the pointer would kind of drift and you'd have to recalibrate it. Basically, there were small things when using this device that were noticeable that affect your experience using it. But hopefully over time, they'll update the software and it will be better. So now that I've talked you through both devices, let's talk about where I use them in my daily life and where they kind of sit with me in my opinions. And the answer to that question is there were two points that I noticed myself using them a lot. The first one being whenever I wanted to use my Steam Deck, but it's the second one where these devices really clicked for me. And that was when I went on holiday. I can say for definite that the Air 2 Pro and the Beam Pro made my traveling experience on my holiday better. So before I left on this holiday, I downloaded Netflix and Amazon Prime video apps, and I'd pre-downloaded some movies on those to use with my Air 2 Pros on the flight. And I found that there were quite a few benefits from doing this. First, watching Brad Pitt drive around in a tank during World War II looked way better on the glasses big screen in front of me than if I had it on my phone propped up on that little table. And using these glasses for the film instead of my phone meant I could put them on, put my head back, resting against the chair, and kind of just look forward while I was watching my movie. Whereas if I was using my phone, I'd either have to hold it up like this, or what I'd normally do is pull the little tray out, prop it up, and then have my head looking down like this. Which, because I'm now old, means that I could maybe strain my neck doing that. And when I got off the plane, I realized that there was another benefit of using these two devices for travel. Because I'd used the Beam Pro to watch all the movies and stuff, when I got to my destination, my phone was still fully charged. Whereas before, my phone would be like half dead, and I'd have to either go back to the hotel and wait around charging it, or take a battery pack out with me, which is kind of annoying. Then, at one point during the holiday, we were in this house, in the middle of nowhere and I had a couple of hours to spare. So I decided to play some Metro 2033 on my Steam Deck. And so I plugged the Air 2 Pros into my Steam Deck, lay down on the sofa with my head back, relaxed, and because the room I was in had a high ceiling, it felt like I was playing on a big movie theater screen. Now there's one more thing I need to talk about, which is the price. As of writing this review, the Air 2 Pros are $399 and the Beam Pro is $199. And you can actually get the two of these bundled together at $598. So these devices aren't cheap, which is something you will have to factor in. But for me personally, the Air 2 Pros and the Beam Pro are a promising look at the future of XR. And I think what you get for the price is of a good high quality, for example, the micro OLED displays and the 120 Hertz refresh rate. And I think these devices are perfect for someone that travels a lot. The Air 2 Pro and the Beam Pro are great travel companions. And if it's any indication about these devices, I will be taking these the next time I travel. But yeah, I'm really excited to see where this technology goes in the next few years. I'll leave a link to the Air 2 Pro and the Beam Pro in the description of this video if you'd like to check them out. Big thank you to Xreal for sending me these products for review. Hopefully I've helped at least one person come to an informed decision about these devices, but if you're still unsure, there are many other reviews online that you can take a look at, so I encourage you to do so. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!